Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Arvid and in this video I want to talk about 2D vector motion blur. It is typically used in Nuke to create fast motion blur without any noise to get quick results. It has some limitations though. For instance, when you've got objects which are rotating around itself, for instance car tires or rotor blades of a helicopter. Also a drawback is you don't see the motion blur inside of reflections or refractions. That are some limitations of the 2D vector blur. But for most cases, for instance, like planes flying across footballs or whatever, something, something which has a linear motion, vector blur is really good for this. So I want to jump into Maya and show you how to set it up using Arnold. So I have a basic scene prepared, just simple spheres dropping, and then I've got a really cheap rotor blade or something, maybe it is car rims or whatever, something really basic which just uh, rotates around itself. So to set this up, all I did was enabling the motion blur. So enable motion blur. The keys is for a rotating objects. So the more keys you have, the more accurate your motion blur will be ar around the object. So six for objects which ro rotate around itself is quite okay, should be enough. Then if you've got a static camera, you can disable camera motion blur. The default is enabled. The length is um, controlling how long the blur streak is. Actually, it is how long the camera shutter is open. And, and therefore, you will get a longer streak for fast moving objects. But 180 degrees is a default value, which is OK in most cases or used in most of the cameras. So let's see how the motion blur looks like. All right, this is the motion blur, the 3D motion blur. You can see the rotor blades are rotating nicely. You've got the nice rounded streak and you see the linear motion blur of the falling spheres. So let's save this. Just uh, overwriting the training image motion blur. And now to create 2D vectors, all you have to do is go to the AUV section choose the built-in types and look for motion vector and enable this. So now you've got a, let's just first stop this guy. So now you have motion vectors enabled. The problem is you don't want to render the motion blur. So what would you do? You would think you can disable the motion blur, but then you don't get calculated vectors. So you need to keep motion blur on, but in the uh, override section, you have something called ignore motion blur. When this is enabled, Arnold Core will still compute the vectors being used to create the motion blur, but it won't render it. But you will get a proper output of the motion vector AOV. So now you can see you've got the motion vector AOV and you can already see that you get some values written inside of the vector. So let's see how to use this inside of Nuke. Alright, so let's export this as well. Self multilayer EXR and override the training image. So yes, and let's stop the render and head over to Nuke. So let's read the file. So we've got the image motion blur and we've got the image. So open and the other one. So we've got the one is the rendered motion blur, this one, and the right one uh, needs to be refreshed. Uh, some caching issue should be fine, I guess. Let's just uh, cache clear all. There we go. So this is the rendered blur, and this is the one without. And when you go to the drop down, you can see the motion vector pass right inside of here. So all you need to do is create a node called vector blur. By pressing tab, you'll get the drop down and choosing in so going to the vector blur, you can choose uh, the UV channels. In this case, it is the motion vector. And now, if you enable this, you don't see the ex expected result. Important is that you enable the alpha channel and choose the RGBA alpha of the render. So, choosing this, this alpha should be inside of the vector blur. Another important thing is uh, to, to have the proper offset. Currently, you see there's a big jump. The problem is the offset is different in Arnold. So this needs to be all the way on one. 
so you get the aligning top edge and then you need to change a method to be forward this is the default for Arnold and here you can directly see a big limitation of 2D vector blur so this is the problem when you have semi-transparent objects and then it's a rotating object around itself you can see that the motion blur is not working properly behind the half transparent blade and also here here's a big error happening um, but other than that you can see that the linear motion is one to one exact so this is now the rendered blur with the noise and this is the 2D blur so you can actually see it's behaving really nice but as I said before there are limitations you and as well you don't get the round blur on the rotating object you see with the rendered blur you get this nice round shape on the 2D blur you don't get that I just wanted to show you a quick demonstration on how to set up and use the 2D vector blur rendered from Arnold inside of Maya and as you can see there are definitely limitations using the 2D blur but also lots of advantages using this because you get all the speed and almost no noise in those 2D vector renders I hope this quick video helped you out how to set up your motion vector and thank you guys very much for all the good feedback and all the fantastic ideas I will be producing a few more tutorials if you've got any requests or questions please let me know and I will try to help you guys out thank you guys